Last year, metal detectorist Alan Meek made an astonishing discovery. Just inches below the surface of a Hertfordshire field, he found an extraordinary hoard of gold plaques, exquisite jewellery and a mysterious figurine. It could be worth thousands of pounds and more importantly lead us to an undiscovered Roman temple. I'm joining Alan, his friends and archaeologists to see if we can find the temple and the riches it could contain. Treasure, it's all around us. Look at that. Every day, new finds are bringing our history to life. I think we've got to find over here. I'm Miranda Kristovnikov. Join me in this hidden world where passions run high, where secrets are kept and where serious money can be made. The world of hidden treasure. I'm on my way to meet Alan Meek at the site where he found the hoard. I want to help discover the value of his find, and by digging at the site, we hope to discover if Alan has stumbled upon a Roman temple. Hi, Miranda. Hi, you must be Alan. Hi, I'm Miranda. Nice to see nice you. To You've picked you a new. great day. I have, haven't I? My yeah. goodness. And this is the field where you found This is your... exactly where it is, and I'll show you where. Alan had been detecting for 12 years before he made his find. You don't get many feelings like that in a lifetime, I can assure you. Because this is what every detector is dreams of. I mean, every Sunday you go out and you come back with a couple of coins. You think, that's great, a couple of coins, a marvellous day. But it was a dream, a dream day. And it, was, it just went on and on. And do you have any idea what the items were? In terms of money, not the slightest idea. The value to me is one of the most valuable things in my entire life. What, what sort of figure are you hoping for? As much as, as much as can be got, because I like money as much as anybody else. But it will never, whatever it is, it will never come close to the, the other feeling, you know, the other value that it has. Alan's amazing hoard includes gold and silver plaques, some wonderful pieces of jewellery, and a beautiful, corroded silver statue of an unknown woman. Because the hoard is under investigation, the soil has not been cleaned away yet. Almost hidden by mud and centuries of corrosion, several plaques show a woman standing inside a temple and beneath her, a faint inscription. The finds are now being studied at the British Museum and because Alan reported his discovery within 14 days, he could receive a reward under the Treasure Act. Hi, you must be Ralph. Hello. Nice Hello, to Miranda. meet you. And you. Great. Nice to see you again. Hello, Alan. Great to see you. You've got Alan's hoard here, haven't I you? I have. Would you like to come this way? I'd love to. Ralph Jackson, leading expert on Roman Britain, is heading the study. Now, we're going to launch our investigations to find out a bit more about what was going on in the field. Um, while we're doing that, what are you going to be doing? I'm going to be working very hard on investigating two aspects. One of them is who is the figure in the portico on so many of these plaques? And secondly, what is the writing? What does it say, the writing that is inscribed beneath several of the figures on these plaques? What I'm hoping is it's going to tell us the name of a deity. I hope it's going to tell us the name of a goddess. And we can hope that that goddess is actually the goddess who was worshipped at the temple. I think you've got your work cut out. Good luck. Thank you. We left Ralph with the difficult task of trying to decode the inscriptions. I wanted to get the site investigation underway. Valuable sites like Alan's have been looted in the past, so we can't reveal where it is. We've built a model instead. For extra security, we've moved roads and added trees. Our man in the field is archaeologist Gil Burley. He's worked with Alan's Detector Club for 10 years. He helps identify and record their finds, preserving all the archaeological information. I went to meet him at a nearby farm. Gil, hi. Hi, Miranda. Very pleased to meet you. How are you doing? This model's arrived. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's very good, isn't it? Yes. Fantastic. And right, X marks the spot. Is that where the hoard is? That's the site of uh, Alan's hoard, yes. Now, how are we going to investigate this temple? What's the plan? Okay, we're going to do a couple of surveys to start with, just on the surface of the field. We're going to do uh, a field walking survey which where we'll collect uh, pottery, building material, other artefacts on the surface and, and plot them out on maps. And then metal detectors will come in, cover the same area, 
we'll recover coins and other metal work, and we'll be looking for clusters of material. It's nice. the clusters that we're interested in. Where, where are the main centres of activity on, on this field? A lot now, of work to do, yeah. Looking at the model, you've got lots of bits of, of, of sort of artefacts and stuff on there, but this is not an artefact. Now, what is this? <laughs> oh, well, this is your HQ. Is it? Where you're going to be based. Right, so we're based here, right? Yep, and you can put your oh, sign on to lay claim to it. Oh, that's great. There we go. It was great to get the investigation underway. And with my own HQ, who says archaeology isn't glamorous? The glamour didn't last. On a rain-soaked day, Gill arranged for volunteer archaeologists and Alan's detecting club to do the field walking survey, a visual search of the field. The first job was to lay out a grid. It's vital that find locations are accurately reported. And we know Alan's hoard was found here. Gill hoped the survey would identify clusters of pottery or building material that could help lead us to the temple. As the team walked across the field, every find was plotted into its corresponding square. Despite the bleak weather, the team made rapid progress. We were discovering great Roman artefacts everywhere, but not everyone was so impressed. I, I do prefer metal detecting personally. It's more exciting. <laughs> By the end of the day, the team had quite a hoard. These pieces of tile, brick and mosaic date back to when the Romans ruled Britain. There were also clusters of Roman pottery. Some dated from the 1st and 2nd centuries, while others came from the 3rd and 4th, closer to the date of Alan's Hoard. At the British Museum, Alan's Hoard is undergoing scientific scrutiny. Susan Lanise is checking that Alan's find is real gold. If it is at least 10% gold, it could count as treasure, meaning it belongs to the crown, and Alan will get a large reward. Alan and I headed to Susan's lab, anxious for her findings. I see you've got some results for us. Yes, look, on the screen here, can you see the three yep. main peaks, these red ones here? These are the three main peaks for gold, and you can see that that dominates the whole of the screen. This tiny one over here is the copper peak. Yes. And this small one at the far end is the silver peak. Mm. So you can see by far the majority, well over the 10% required for the Treasure Act. Great. Now, how do you feel about that, Alan? Could not be better, could it? Could not really be better. Indeed. That, that, that's the clasp that's in the case just behind you there. But yeah. the other jewellery, which we've already looked at, is very yeah. similar. Brilliant. Oh, it's that's, really, that's really good news. Brilliant, yeah. So no doubt about it, the fact that it's treasure? No doubt at all. Confirmed as treasure, Alan's hoard will now be valued by independent experts to decide his reward. A week later, Gill called us all back to site for the next stage of the investigation. Alan's metal detecting club would perform a controlled survey of the site. Working to the same grid as the field walkers, they were looking for clusters of finds that might help lead us to the temple. With Alan's discovery fresh in their minds, everyone was hoping that they too might strike gold. I think we've got a find over here. Gil, what have we got? Well, there's a couple of Roman coins that Carl's found. Oh, uh, well done. The, the smaller one uh, it looks as if it might be late Roman, perhaps 4th century. How, how do you tell that? That just I'm sorry. Well, I'm really going, like... I'm going by the size as much as anything, in fact. <laughs> Um, but what about the other one? Yeah, the other one, slightly better condition. This one's got a bit more on there. It's got a little bit more immediately visible. It will clean up, but it looks like it's a bit more. Yes, it's see. almost more convincing. A bit more shape, isn't it? Than the other one, yeah. Brilliant. So we've got possibly a third-century coin and possibly a fourth-century coin from the Roman period. Fantastic! Oh, well done. Good Thank find. You. Can you just find us a few more, but in a bit better condition? I'll try my best. On the other side of the field, Harvey had picked up a strong signal deep underground. Now, you seem to be digging to Australia here. What's, what's the deal? What's going on? Well, it's uh, quite a large signal, and um, I'm confused at the moment between possibly a large piece of iron or it could be um, non-ferrous, in other words, not iron. So I'm going to have to go a bit wider and a bit, perhaps a bit deeper. It's a fasten from a gate! <laughs> 
See how deep that got. Marvellous. Great. <laughs> Put it all back now. It was a perfect collaboration. The archaeologists bagged and recorded every detectorist find so that they could be analysed later. The bag lady, where is she? We've got a coin. So what do you think about when you're detecting? Do you, does your mind wander onto other oh, things? Oh, it does, it does indeed. Yeah, um, holidays, sex. <laughs> oh, yeah. Across the field, the feminine touch was definitely working for Anne. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's beautiful. Looks like a Celtic pinhead. If you can see here, you've got where it would have been attached. There's just a little bit there where it would have had the pin attached to it. Has that made your day? Yes. The best find of the day? Yes, I think it is so far. Yes, that's beautiful. I'm very pleased with that. It had been a very successful day. We'd found over 50 Roman coins, most of them in the area where Alan had found his hoard. The coins were another clue to the exact location of the temple, but now we needed to look underground. Geophysicist Mark Noel had the unenviable task of walking up and down across the entire site, a journey of over 30 miles. With his machine, he measured very tiny changes in the Earth's magnetic field. From this, Mark produced an underground map which could show the foundations of a temple. Hi, Mark. Hi, Gil. Hi. Alan. <laughs> here, we have well, the, here we have the jackpot. Well, what have you got for us? Uh, here's the field, four hectares. And um, the first thing that's quite obvious is there's, there's two pipes running across the yeah. line yeah. of black and white and black and white there. But we, knew, we know that. I think the farmer was explaining Ooh. the water pipe, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, try and ignore those and uh, concentrate on what appear to be a whole series of ditches, massive ditch ditch enclosures. enclosures. Mm, right, that right. one there is 60 metres by 40 metres something like that. These huge ditches indicated a major Roman settlement centred around a road or track. But did any of these buildings look like a temple? Um, we go uh, 50 yards <coughs> up the Roman road and, and turn left into this field here. And there's something which is not rectangular, but there's a circular yeah. Oh, yeah. ditch. Oh, Do you see that? That's right. about That's fantastic. 15 metres in diameter with a couple and of pits. you know... Uh, Go on, Alan, you say where, it. <laughs> where that circle is, it's mm. within three metres of where I found the hoard. It couldn't have been better. Roman temples are often circular, so we knew exactly where we needed to dig. Gil and David didn't hang around. Stick that in. David and the team had to mark out the area to be excavated. Through, through, that, through that cross. We're putting in the extension now. Very good. <laughs> Give that man a medal. <laughs> the plan is to put in three trenches across the circular feature we found on the geophysics. Trench one lies roughly east to west. Trench two lies parallel. And trench three was right in the area where Alan found his hoard. As the digger scraped back the soil, David and Gill looked on nervously. One careless move could destroy the precious evidence below. With the boys digging away, I went back to see Alan. He'd received the government expert's valuation of his hoard. What reward could he expect? Hello, how nice are you? Nice to see you. I'm great. And you? Good. Very well, thank you. Have you got the letter then? It's through there. You okay. go thank and you. have a look. There it is. Great. It is. What does it say? You want the... The valuation, yeah, yeah the all-important figure. Well, the figure at the bottom, yeah, the all-important figure is valuation 22,000 to 26,000. Gosh. Now, it seems like quite a lot of money, but is that what you expected? It is a lot of money, and I had no expectation one way or the other, except that which I've been led to expect by people who do know something much more than I do about it. And that isn't the figure that has been banded around as, as a likely figure. Are you going to contest that figure? Do you think you might be able to get more than that? Well, we have 28 days. Uh, 
at least to make up our minds. Uh, I should be advised because I, I, I don't have enough knowledge to make a decision, but I shall certainly listen and then do whatever I think is right at the end of it. Part of the reward will go to the landowner who allowed Alan to detect on his land. Both of them felt the government's valuation was too low, so they've asked for a second opinion from independent dealer Nigel Mills. This hoard is certainly very important because it's got such an interesting collection of plaques, silver and gold, combined with the gold jewellery. It makes it very important historically and commercially. I'd certainly like to buy it for the figures that the valuation committee have put on it because I think they're a little bit on the low side. My own research suggests, looking at the New York sales and London sales in the last few years, that the value should be higher than they've said. My own figure, which I've recommended to Alan, is in the region of 45 to 50,000 pounds. The British Museum want to acquire Alan's hoard and will have to pay his eventual reward. They have very little money for new acquisitions, so if the reward is high, they may have to apply for a grant to help them afford it. In the museum's basement, Susan is using a powerful X-ray machine to examine Alan's plaques. Ralph had been struggling to read the faint inscriptions, and Susan hoped the X-rays would see through the mud and corrosion to reveal the mysterious lettering. For even more detail, Susan used a computer to enhance the X-ray images. The results were stunning. For the first time, it was possible to see clearly the letters on the inscriptions and the sculpting of the images. So, what did Ralph make of it? Now, how are you getting on with the inscriptions from the plaques? Have you managed to decipher them yet? Fantastic. The news good. is really good, because apart from actually finding fragments that have joined together, there are six of the plaques that have shown to have inscriptions on them. And what's better still, um, having x-rays, radiographs done, we can read much of what those inscriptions say. Brilliant. I mean, the, the x-rays look fantastic. It's really, really clear. What, what actually does it say? Well, once you know what it says, you'll be able to read it. And that is, it says, to the goddess Senua, Dei Senu, D-E-A-E, -E, yeah. Dei, to the goddess, yeah. S E N V, because you know yes, the Romans use Vs yeah. and not use, um, and the beginning of the A, the rest of it broken away. And then on the bottom, there's another name, Firmanus. This is a good uh, Roman name. So that is the chap who's dedicated this plaque to the goddess Senua. Now, I've never heard of Senua before. Well, you're not the only one. There's no one's heard of Senua before. This is a completely new goddess. You're joking. Fantastic find. But whether it's Senar or Senua, this is a new deity. It's a new goddess totally from Roman unknown. Britain. You mean unknown what? anywhere in You've Roman just Britain found or a elsewhere. New goddess. You've added a new goddess to the pantheon of, uh, of deities in That's Roman incredible. Britain. How my, do you feel about family that? You will never live that way. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next thing you might ask Stunning. is, you know, who, who is she? Yeah, what, well, what, what is do she? we know about her? Virtually nothing. Only what this find tells us, because she is a new goddess. The figurine, I think, we have to believe could be the image of Senua. The find has introduced her, and I might get a little bit more information from the, the hoard, but my hope is that the field work might just shed a little bit of extra light on this otherwise unknown deity. Brilliant. Guess that's our job then, Alan. So it is, so it is. Ralph was doing a great job, and we wanted to match his success on site. The dig was in full flow, and the trenches were open. We wanted to investigate the source of the circular feature that we'd seen on the geophysics. Could it really be the foundations of a temple? Alan's clubmates were playing a crucial role too. Working their way through the soil removed from the trenches, they were searching for clues to understand the site. Lucky Carl was already living up to his name. Gil, what do you reckon this is? Right, it's a, it's a chisel uh, with a tang. This is the blade at this end. It looks as if it's um, Bronze Age, in fact. So the last time that was used was 3,000 years ago? Well, possibly the last time it was used uh, as a chisel for woodworking. It may have been 3,000 years ago. Uh, but I think it's on this site because it may have been deposited as a votive offering. Oh, right. So like a, you know, an antique from the Roman An antique, era. yeah. That's right. right. So it's a special item. What have you got there? 
that's a Roman coin. That's beautiful. It's, it's really nice. big. It's not too bad really at all, big. is it? Yeah. It's uh, you. Can, I think there's a man and a horse on there, which would probably make it second century. Fantastic. I think it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's quite a nice coin. Very yeah. handsome. Yeah. Just minutes later, Lucky Carl struck again with a discovery that could tell us more about the mysterious figurine in Alan's hoard. Alan, come over here. Got something you might like. See? Look at this, Alan. Oh, Carl's just found. Good girl. Color. You found that, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Just got that. Where? Just here. Just here. But That's where I think it came, came from. from the spoil. Yeah. You think yeah. it came from the corner of the trench behind you us? You yeah. know what I hope it is. It's the right well, size I know what we're for a stand. Is. Right yeah. size for a stand for a yeah for, for a your statue. Figure. That's the way up it would have been, and that's exactly the right size for me. That's exactly the right size for the for the statue. There's no writing on the statue no. to tell you what the statue no. is, is no. there? Well, if that's the base Indeed, and that's they, got they, the writing on it, it, it could it be a dedication that will tell you a lot more about the yeah. statue. Just as everything seemed to be going so well, the weather took a turn for the worse. As the rain fell, we had no choice but to clear up and retreat to the vans. Mark, can you do the level? Dave, can you pick up the fines? Just gather them up, fill the wheelbarrow with the tools and get them back to the vans. David was concerned that the heavy rain could flood the site. We could only sit and hope. We didn't get back all day. And as night fell, the empty site was vulnerable to another threat. The weather is really awful. Um, I don't think there's anything to be gained by staying out here. We've shone the torch right across the fields and uh, we've not even, even seen a badger. So uh, we're off. The following morning we returned to site. Gil and David inspected the trenches for any signs of damage. They seemed to be okay but with so much time lost to rain, the pressure was on to get results. We'd made some great finds, but we still needed the archaeological evidence to tell us if we had found a temple. In Trench 1, David had unearthed a large patch of chalk. Could this be the breakthrough we were looking for? It's clearly what I would refer to as a high traffic area. I mean, chalk floor is, is, is more solid. What we've got elsewhere is, is more loamy. It, it wouldn't take an awful lot of people walking up and down on it. But this right. has clearly been deliberately laid as a, a more solid floor. Right, so an entrance or a passage or something. Or a passage yeah. or a, an area with a specific use. OK. You know, if we're talking about temples, uh, we could be talking about a small area with an altar. So are we still thinking temple here? I think that is certainly on the agenda. Good, um, it's good. certainly on the agenda. Um, the, the shape of the enclosure is right. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to consider it. I'm not yet prepared to pin down and say, yes, this is definitely what we've got. We haven't okay. got enough of those answers yet. As David worked on, I rushed back to see Ralph, who had been looking at the silver base Carl had found. Was it really the base from Alan's figurine? Now, we've got a base and a statue. The big question is, do they belong together? Do they belong together? Well, let's have a look. I would say, yes, they do belong together. That base is of the right proportions for the figurine. You can see that the colour is very similar, the corrosion products are the same. And of course they were found very, very close together. So I would say, 95% sure, this is the base for that figurine. And wasn't there an inscription on the base? Does that tell us more about the figurine? The base does indeed have an inscription. And that inscription helps us to identify the figurine. The lady is, in fact, a goddess. And we can tell this by looking at the base and picking out what is actually quite a challenging inscription. Mm. You can see that lettering. And you can see that, I think, quite yeah. clearly. We have Dei Senui, to the goddess Senua. And so the base for the figurine links the figurine 
to that information that we got from the plaques. Yeah. Not only do we know that the goddess was called Senua, but we can now say that that figurine shows Senua, is intended to show the goddess Senua. Yeah. This new goddess for Roman Britain, and this is what she looks like. It's Just fantastic. a pity we haven't got her face. Fantastic. How exciting. <laughs> With the sun setting at the dig, Andy proved that it's always worth persevering until the end. What have you got? Treasure? Treasure. Well, no, no, oh, not treasure. Oh, my goodness, look at that. That is fantastic. Is that gold? The gold it's half be... stator, I think it's of the Trinovantes. This has to be the find of the, find oh, of the dig, yes. I think. After such a successful dig, I wanted to say thank you. And what better way than by giving everybody a Roman feast? It was also time to put Gil on the spot and find out if we had discovered a temple. Now we've finished all the digging, um, I have to ask you guys um, about the temple idea. I want you to put your cards on the table and I want you to tell me, is it a temple or not? Right, well... I know it... you're not going to give me a one-word answer. No, I'm not going to give you a one-word answer. <laughs> It's a ritual enclosure, but it's not... We don't think that it's actually a building with a roof on. We think the foundations are not substantial enough for that. Right. But didn't we find roof tiles? We found roof tiles, but they seem to have been used in making an enclosure wall at one period. What we had found was actually a shrine devoted to our goddess Senua. The mysterious circle on the geophysics was probably a chalk walkway enclosing a marsh or spring. The chalk patch David had discovered was a platform where people stood to cast their offerings to Senua. It was one of these gifts that Alan had uncovered over 1,600 years later. Our dig had uncovered even more of these remarkable offerings. Dozens of coins, a clay figurine, and a large hoard of Bronze Age axes, chisels and spearheads, making it one of the most important Roman sites in Britain. Finally, at the British Museum, the Treasure Valuation Committee was making its decision on the level of Alan's reward. Appointed by the government, they had to decide between the original valuation of up to £26,000 and Alan's independent valuation of up to £50,000. I, I, I think £50,000 is a bit much. £26,000. If you add on to that, a little bit more for the fact that it's an assemblage and it's rare and it's British... I think uh, 33,000 would be fair enough. Yeah, and I would certainly support that figure, although it wasn't where I started my uh, position. I'm confident that's a fair figure to all parties. We are agreed that it shall be recommended to the Secretary of State that a reward of £35,000 shall be paid without abatement. 35000 That's a fair amount of money, isn't it? As you could buy a very nice second-hand Bentley for that. Alan will split the money with the landowner, his clubmates and several local charities. While he waits for his cheque, Alan is back out detecting, waiting and hoping for his next magical discovery. Now, overall, what have we learnt from the hoard and the excavation? We've got some tremendously important material, very interesting jewellery and plaques with inscriptions. And we've got a new goddess, and this is something of national importance, of international importance, we might say. We want people to see this as soon as possible.